CARICOM leaders end first day of summit on a positive note and in sport. Trinidad and Tobago announces their regional four-day squad. I'm Ricardo Roberts and this is Caribbean in 10 for Tuesday, December 4. I'll be back with the details after the break. All right, let's go straight to our story now where CARICOM leaders end the first day of their special summit yesterday, indicating generally that there was great receptivity on the need to move forward on implementing the measures to ensure the future success of the CARICOM single market and economy, the CSME. Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness told reporters that he thinks all the heads and their delegates accept that now is the time for the CARICOM and the CSME to grapple with all the outstanding issues that they have in the past. Holness, who is chairing the two-day meeting, says he believes the leaders are in good position with regards to moving forward the initiative. Trinidad and Tobago Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says he also believes that the CSME matter is now being taken much more seriously than it was before. He added that the initiative is so important to Trinidad and Tobago where they are constantly looking for market space and protecting our home. Rowley made it clear that Port of Spain regards CARICOM as its home market, saying being the major manufacturing and exporting country in CARICOM, they could not sit idly by and allow the single market vision to disappear. High Court judge in a High Court judge in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Justice Esco Henry has recused himself from the election petitions case in which the two members of the main opposition New Democratic Party, the NDC, are seeking over to overturn the results of the 2015 general elections. This according to attorney Maya Eustace, who is a member of the team representing Benjamin Breng Exeter and Lauren Shara Batiste, now used this told CMC News on Tuesday, that the legal team is discussing the latest developments and details would be provided later. Exeter and Batiste are challenging the victories of Sir Louis Straker and Montgomery Daniel of the ruling United Labour Party, the ULP in the Leeward Island and North Windward constituencies. The decision by Justice Henry comes days after she granted an application last Friday by Carlos James, the attorney representing the two government legislators to postpone until next February the hearing of oral testimonies originally scheduled for this week. In other news now, ExxonMobil yesterday announced its 10th discovery offshore Guyana and increased its estimate of the discovered recoverable resources for the Starbrook block to more than 5 billion oil equivalent barrels. We get more in this HGP Nightly News report. ExxonMobil is very excited to have its 10th discovery of your Guyana diploma won well. Speaking to reporters on Monday, ExxonMobil's country manager, Rod Henson, said that the well encountered about 121 feet of hydrocarbon-bearing sandstone. This well is about 17 miles south of the turbo uh, discovery. The discovery, Henson, related adds to the potential that will help Guyanese investors to have the confidence to make capital investments. To take some risks so that they can take advantage of these opportunities. If you have you know, just one project uh, and one small amount of work, you may not feel confident to make some investments to take full advantage. The discovery is expected to increase value to the country. Henson was also questioned on the costs of production per barrel that ExxonMobil was using. Well, these investments are multi-decade investments. So we, we evaluate our opportunities over a full range of, of prices because over the next 20 to 30 years, the price of crude is going to change quite a bit. So the, we evaluate over, uh, we, we perform multiple sensitivities on cost and, uh, and price. The latest discovery now increases the estimated recoverable resource for the Starbuck block to more than 5 billion oil equivalent barrels. Premier of the British Virgin Islands, Dr. Orlando Smith, says the 
territory will approach international partners in the financial services sector to back the United Kingdom when it leaves the European Union. In a statement on Monday, Smith said he will be leveraging the BVI's strong relationship with markets such as Asia and Africa. Britain's exit from the EU is among the things Smith will discuss during a joint ministerial council with other leaders of the UK overseas territories this week. The group is slated to discuss what Brexit means for territories in the areas of international trade, the environment, development funding, and EU exit legislation. He also noted that his main focus in these joint ministerial meetings is to promote the role of the BVI in a post-Brexit world and to protect the rights of BVI residents as it relates to the territory's constitutional relationship with the UK. And stay with us. Your Medley Sport is next. Next time on Coalition Corner, standing up for human rights. We're not going to get there if we don't start looking at stigma and discrimination and providing legal ways of persons getting redress when they face stigma and discrimination. Should government take the lead? As we speak about our creating an enabling environment, it has to be government driven. There are persons who need access to care, who need to be nurtured in care, they need to be welcomed in care. Don't miss the next Coalition Corner. Physically strong and sturdy, spiritually balanced, we clean and purge me. Mentally advanced, we always urge me. We read couple books and challenge the clergy. Plenty turn to drought. Life is full of ups and downs. The carousel. That's when this tight money run. No little shop can get stuck in the slum. All who perpetrate have to fuck up and run. No man to more than them share of kegs. One vice attack just like Simon said. All-rounder Imran Khan will lead a 13-man squad for TNT Red Force in their opening clash against Windward Islands Volcanoes in the regional four-day championship set for December 13. The experienced Khan was the only player who stood out in last year's edition of the tournament. The Trinidadian has 92 first-class matches added to his career and was one of the few TT bowlers to register over 25 wickets last season with fellow all-rounder Yannick Karaya named as his deputy. The TNT Red Force has brought back some familiar faces from the last tournament with the likes of batsman Kyle Hope, youth keeper Amir Jangu, as well as promising players like Brian Charles and Jeremy Solozano. Noticeably absent is West Indies wicketkeeper batsman and former captain Dinesh Ramdin. The match bowls off at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy in Taruba, Trinidad. And striker Naki Wells, whose header gave Bermuda an upset 1-0 victory over El Salvador in a recent CONCACAF Nations League qualifier, says he's enjoying football again. Wells, who drew a blank last season, hindered by being sidelined for several months after minor ankle surgery, is hoping to continue his impressive scoring form after notching his fourth goal in seven matches for club and country. Wells struck his second, his third goal for English Championship outfit Queen's Park Rangers in their two-all draw away to Rotherham United on uh, that Tuesday night. Uh, he had endured a 28-game barren spell before he netted against Sheffield last Wednesday last month, his 10th appearance for QPR after joining on a long-season loan from Premier League side Burnley. That's Caribbean in 10. Good afternoon.